Hello and welcome back to my channel and today we're taking a look at Anthem with a 47 TTI because yes I am revisiting some games from time to time just to see if better hardware improves the experience and honestly Anthem still falls short at least in 4k to be fair and this is just me being transparent with you guys this game absolutely plays fine in full HD and 2k doesn't matter the GPU like obviously if you have 1060 2060 2070 I would recommend having like full HD if you have 2080 3070 probably 2k if you have I don't know 4090 you could probably try 4k but end of the day this game is just still in the level they left it so despite the patch that added DLSS support and everything else the game still feels a little bit rough around the edges because no one actually continued to work on this game to polish the edges. So what we actually have, let's have a quick look for the settings. So obviously we're going with a 4K native full screen, no vertical sync and DLSS is turned off. For the graphic uh, we're going with the ultra preset so we're not changing anything at all. And honestly there is very little difference between ultra and high. And I would say this is actually quite important for those people who don't have top of the shelf GPU and you're not playing in 4K, don't waste your time on ultra settings. It's it's simply not worth it. The extra smoke, the extra layer of volumetric fog and the extra spark from your gun is simply not worth the chunk of FPS you're gonna be losing every time you shoot your gun. I've cranked the field of view slightly above, so the ground FOV is changed, pilot FOV is increased and flight FOV is increased, swim FOV is roughly around where it was before. And what do we have? As you can see the game itself and the model looks fantastic. Now here's the thing, even right now with the 4070 Ti and this game is graphically bound, this is not a CPU bound game, we're using 70% of the GPU workload pulling 7.3 gigs of video memory and 16 gigs of actual RAM and that tells you something because usually when you run out of video memory the game offloads all the other images or all the video cache into your RAM for quick access. I can just imagine what would happen with people with 16 gigs of RAM trying to run this game in 4K and wondering why the game is stuttering and freezing so here's the optimization problem. And that's only number one. Second of all, even though we are currently 60-ish, the moment we move into the real world, in certain areas, certain segments, without even doing anything, we are dropping below 60 frames. Which for me is a little bit weird, like, let's, let's do this jump, look at this. 53. For what? Nothing's really happening. Now, granted volumetric fog and stuff like this, but... The FPS is just dropping up and down. So here's the thing, when it comes to this particular game, luckily for us, you can't really feel that you're below 60 frames. And I would say that is a very big thing, because unless I had MSI enabled, I would not be able to tell you that this game is not running at 60 frames. I know that this game was released on consoles as well, and a lot of people do like the game, they were in discussion about maybe revisiting it and, you know, maybe even giving us Anthem 2. But end of the day, they decided against it. Now, when it comes to this game's graphical fidelity, and, you know, I am a sucker for graphical fidelity. This game just takes the cake. Like, the underwater sequences, and there's not too many of them, granted. But all of this actually looks good. Like, I can't even say it's bad. But then again, even with nothing in a frame view, we're losing frames. GPU usage, inconsistent. But hey ho, what can we do? But all that aside, and I know that I'm probably going to be repeating myself about the graphical fidelity, this game definitely deserves a little bit of some love from us, in my opinion, because, hey, this game tried to do something none of us did, which is just being a very simple looter shooter which at its core this is what this game is about there is a storyline there is an RPG element of progression of your javelins unlocking new stuff and everything else but end of the day unless you're gonna be going for I don't know Grandmaster 1 2 3 difficulty levels this is just gonna be a 
very nice game to chill with your friends. And even if you don't have any friends, you can play it on a single player. Now, the problem with the single player, it gets real boring real fast. Because, as you can see, this is literally the game itself. You aim and shoot and that's all there is. Is it good? Eh, I mean, it does what it says on a pin, so technically it's 10 out of 10 game. But... In general, I would say it's probably not what you're looking for, full stop. Unless this is exactly what you're looking for. In terms of performance itself, I can't even say that I'm surprised about the 4070 Ti performance here, because even with 2070, 2080 and 3070 Ti, we had exactly the same performance, like literally one to one. And surprisingly enough, despite them actually adding DLSS support, DLSS makes things even worse. Surprisingly enough, you're going to be having more hiccups, more stutters and longer level load times than if you are playing in a native resolution with, well, slightly less graphical fidelity. And one can wonder why this decision was made, and honestly, I do not have answer for that at all. Irregular frame drops, everything else will happen, but here's the fun fact about this game. The longer you're gonna play this game, the better it's gonna run. Which I think is somehow slightly connected to the way this game actually caches the files and the levels. And honestly, I would say after playing this game for about 2 hours in free, free roam, I did not see my performance prior to this benchmark run to fall actually below 60 frames. It was all over the place, it was 80, 100, sometimes above 100 and, and stuff like this, but it was never below 60, so I do believe there is something with the level caching or something going on. Hence, you know, if you play the game and you move through the areas quickly, because essentially this is exactly what the story will ask you to do. This is where the problem actually starts. The game is unable to catch up with the player movements. And I know that there's been uh, talks with developers and they said, hey, we try to make transitions between the levels seamless and everything like that. But they actually never managed to do that. So that's one of the things that kind of put the people off. And considering this game is running from NVMe drive, so it's not down to the, you know, HDD, the regular hard drive, the spinny disks, or a slow SSD. I mean, granted, you know, NVMe and SSD, to an extent, depends on the transfer rate, can be in the same pole bar, but it's still gonna be slightly bit faster, Let, let's be honest here. It still has exactly the same performance, which essentially means if you ever wanted to play Anthem 4K Ultra settings with 60 frames, you probably need something like a 4090 and the latest gen CPU and latest everything just to have the raw power to push through the code of the game. I mean, that is literally how I look at this because there's nothing else that would explain this because graphically this game is fantastic. I mean, it's it's breathtaking even with its very limited play area because it's essentially the same thing you just go back and forth and granted the map itself technically is big you will be spending a lot of time in each of these areas just farming it and then you have to go for the tombs or tombs and you know trying to get something more out of it so you can progress the storyline otherwise you're stuck and all of this i covered in a previous video when i was first benching this game but apart from this when you just fly like this i mean the game looks good I mean, you, you cannot say this game does not look good right now, at this moment. This is glorious. And performance is where it should be. The moment we drop down... Boom. We're below 60 for a second, we landed in, GPU spikes up, and one, once it finishes up, we're, we're back here. We're pulling less RAM, the GPU usage is slightly higher, CPU is actually really where it's supposed to be. And it's good to go, but it's not a consistent experience, is it? I mean, it's just the way it is. Nevertheless, I would say if you have some free time, if you actually have purchased this game, probably you can try to play this game with DLSS and some friends, and maybe you will still enjoy it. But I would say I have not yet seen a configuration that runs this game 
flawlessly, and I'm talking about PC here, don't even throw consoles at my way because I know they probably will run this game with no issues. I would say on a PC side, it's a little bit, a little tiny bit of a lost cause. However, even with all that, I would say it's fine. I honestly would say this is fine. Even if the room is on fire and you think it's not fine, it actually is. I don't know guys, I would say this is not exactly a game where I can give my verdict, is it good or bad, I would say it does what it says on a tin, and end of the day this is what games should be about, you know, like if the game fulfills its promise of the world and what you're supposed to be doing, can't really say it's a bad game, and performance wise, hey, we knew about this the moment this game launched, or landed, or got announced, it's just one of those things but it does not mean by any means that you are forbidden of having fun so yeah that's all I have for you guys today hope you enjoyed this maybe you learned something new and on this note I'm gonna leave you to it thanks for watching and have a good one over now